And I learned how to die well, but I also learned how to live well. Because if you've, if you've been to the other side, you know there is no death. And if there is no death, it's much easier to live life to the fullest. My name is Leigh Moore. I've had a series of near-death and near-death-like and a shared death experience. And so I see it very much as a, a timeline throughout my life, as more than a, each of them as a single experience. They're each part of the experience. So the very first uh, near-death experience happened when I was 21. And it was after the birth of my second child. Uh, he'd been an active child, but it was a normal pregnancy. Uh, when I, I went into labor, he started doing flip-flops in my stomach. And I, I don't blame the medical people at all for what happened after this. It was a very high stress, tense situation, and they had to act very quickly. But what happened was every time that he turned around, he, his head would be up toward my stomach. And so they had to reach in me, physically reach inside of me and turn him around. And this was beyond painful. This was, I was, my fingers were, my fingernails were digging into the wall behind me to try and, and get out of the pain. Uh, so it was extremely excruciating. And he did make it into the world. Everything was okay. He was fine. There, he was, there were no cords wrapped around his head or neck or anything. And he didn't come out breech. So everything went well there. But a couple days after he was born, I came down with a very high fever. I was, the temperature was 111 in Fahrenheit, which is 44 degrees Celsius. And so it was extremely high. And people have asked me, well, that's not possible. You couldn't have lived through that. And uh, the, the answer to that is, of course, I didn't. I've been sitting in the hospital bed or sitting in the hospital on the bed, laying down actually on the hospital bed. And of course, when you're that sick, you're not moving. Uh, and then for no apparent reason, I sat up. And I turned around and there on the bed behind me was my body. There was no emotion. There was no fear. There was no pain. There was nothing. Just, oh, there's my body. And then I floated out of my body and into a very, very dark tunnel. Pitch black, absolutely cannot see or perceive anything. But it was warm, safe, loving, non-judgmental, and blissful. I just blissful like I had never felt. And I'm kind of perceiving that I'm floating through this tunnel, but I'm I can't see, so I don't I can't see movement. I just kind of perceive it. And I get to this, what I call a widening, maybe a room. I don't know. I, I still couldn't see anything or perceive anything, but it felt wider. And I'm here and I'm like, well, it still feels blissful. It still feels wonderful. Okay, I'm fine. I'm good with it. And then a voice talked to me. I can't see this being at all. Uh, I can only hear this voice. And it was very male. Well, not very. It was, it, I perceived it as male, it was very loving, very, very non judgmental, very kind. And he asked, Do you want to come now? And I, I knew instantly what he was saying. And I kind of panicked for a little bit, knowing what he was saying. And I said, I can't. I have two children to raise. And I perceived a nod of the head, no judgment, just a nod of the head. And I was instantly going back down the tunnel, plopped back in my body and fever broke. And I was out of the hospital the next day. And I'm like, wow, what was that? But what I did know, I, I didn't have a name for it at the time. This was back before the internet, back before you know we could do research on these things. 
I had no idea what it was or what it was called. I just knew that I came back having chosen to be in this life and having a purpose, having knowing that I am not just here, I have a reason for being here. And that helped me immensely through my life. I also, at that point, realized that I, I had a, a really calming presence, which throughout my life um, gave, got me promoted many times in jobs, always to management. Um, I wasn't trying to, it just happened. And I went on throughout my life. And it was several decades later. Now, I was at that point in time, I was still ingrained with the training that I had had that if you have these kinds of experiences, you are going to hell. And so I just pushed it down inside of me, pushed it down. And I didn't talk about it. I didn't. Re I tried very hard not to remember it. Although weird things kept happening throughout my life after that. Uh, and, 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 in, and even before, but uh, the, it was just like, okay, I'm not going to deal with these things. And then several decades later, it got to some sort of a point, and I wasn't trying to do this. I didn't know what was happening. But I started having these other experiences. And in one of them, uh, this was in about 2019, I had this interesting experience where I was... I had been helping people through the eruption and the, the 2018 eruption of Kilauea volcano. I live in Hawaii and I'm, I'm fairly close to I'm four miles from where it, it erupted. So I had been helping the people and helping the community all of that time. And then in 2019, I'm at a, a meeting with a friend of mine and well, we went through the meeting and then uh, the next day, uh, I came down with another high fever. I don't know how high this one was. This is in the middle of the hottest part of summer. And I mean, it's hot outside. And I've got every blanket, every piece of clothing, everything I can find is on me. And I'm still shivering. So I know it was a high fever. And I noticed that I had really aches, a lot of aches and pains in my body. I noticed that... Um, my internal organs, my lungs and, and such, they seem to be kind of not, I, I could feel them for sure. I don't know if I would call it pain, but I could feel that there was something going on in them. And so I just stayed in bed for three days. And during that time, I went somewhere. I don't know how I went there. I don't know why I went there. But it was kind of, it, it was very indistinct, like foggy, but it was a kind of a orange, brown, pink, grayish color. However, it was again, warm, blissful, non-judgmental, just loving. And there were beings there. I knew they were there. I could hear them. I couldn't see them. I can't tell you who they were. And I could tell you there was a lot of them. And they seem to be kind of circling around me, but I can't say that for sure. But they were chanting at me. They were chanting over and over, you have done what you came here to do. You have done what you came here to do. And I'm like, oh, that's fine. That's fine. What? And as soon as I realized what it was they were saying, back in the body again. And I'm like, wait a minute. If I've done what I came here to do, why am I still here? Normal question. No answer. So, okay, fine. If I've done what I came here to do, maybe I better start shoring up all the loose ends and such. And so I, I did everything I could that if I was going to be gone from here suddenly, that whoever was left behind would have as easy a time as possible with it. I set up all of the what, who gets what of my stuff and, and what needs to go, everything. And I started studying if I'm going to be here, but I may not be here very long. Maybe I better study how to die well. 
And so I got really into Ram Das. And this is when things really started for me as a spiritual path. I studied everything from Ram Das. And I learned how to die well, but I also learned how to live well. Because if you've, if you've been to the other side, you know there is no death. And if there is no death, it's much easier to live life to the fullest. And so I was doing the very best I could. Of course, I'm really weak. I'm not able to move. It's not like I'm going mountain climbing or anything. But the, the energy, the, the feeling of life had changed. And one day I was sitting on the, uh, on the, just on the couch, because again, I can't move very much. And all of a sudden, this bliss just came over me. And it was so amazing. It was just so wonderful. And it lasted for three days. And I'm like, I could do this forever. I could be in this forever. This is so wonderful. But then it dissipated. And I thought, well, now what? Now, this is about December, and I've been studying Ram Dass, everything about Ram Dass. And if, if, for people who don't know, Ram Dass is a spiritual, was a spiritual teacher um, who started out with Timothy Leary and had gone to India and studied with uh, Neem Karoli Baba as his teacher. And he came back and he taught everything that he knew to other people. Okay. And so one of the things that he taught was beyond death, dying doesn't have to be something that everybody grieves for. You don't go anywhere. You're, you, you become part of the universal energy and you become everywhere. But you don't go anywhere. You don't leave. It's not possible to leave. And I knew that when he passed, he would want everybody to celebrate his freedom. And so come about December 23rd, he passed. December 25th, I'm sitting on my couch. And again, I'm, I'm still not moving all that much. I'm learning how to get around and such, but I'm, I'm not doing that much. I'm sitting on the couch. I live in Hawaii. The front door is open. I can see right out through the carport. And on the other side of the carport is just forest. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, there's trees and everything, and, and there's not like walking paths or anything. And suddenly I see somebody walking by on the carport, and I'm like, Okay, okay. And this person appears to be dressed in white robes and, you know, white and kind of shaggy and bearded and, you know, scraggly hair. And I'm like, okay, okay. Wait, what? There's not a path there. There's no way somebody could be walking by there. And then I just perceived this big smile on his face. And I knew it was Ram Das. He had visited me afterward because I knew he didn't want to be grieved for. He wanted to be celebrated for his freedom that he had now found. And I was doing that. And so I managed to get up the strength. And I went out to the place where he had been. And I saw on the ground, now mid-December, not the fruiting season, in a, the shape of a diamond, four perfectly ripe, perfectly same-shaped guavas on the ground he had left me a gift it was an amazing point in my life and it was a no turning back point I knew I was on the right path so we'll go a little bit for, further forward by now I was helping other people guiding people to to get past their traumas because obviously I'm working through mine and I'm like, but there's something wrong here. There's something that hasn't been dealt with something I need to de deal with. If I'm going to move to the next step, if I'm going to move beyond where I am now. And I realized it had to be my relationship with my mother. 
I had, had no contact with her for the last 20 years of her life, and probably more than that. I had no wish to have any contact with her. But I knew I had to, to heal this, this wound. And this is before she passed. And I have no idea how to do it. I'm not going to have contact with her. A friend of mine said, you know, I had a similar situation. And I learned to see that my parents loved me enough to give me the foundation for who I am now. And I thought, oh, that's wonderful for you. But that can't be for me. And so I went on a little bit further and I'm like, I still can't find a way to do this. So I asked to everything, nothing, whatever you want to call it. You can call it source, whatever. I just said, help me find it. Help me help, help me heal this. Help me find the way to heal this. Give me some help here. Instantly, I found myself as a visualization in a theater, a completely empty theater. But there's all the seats, everything's there, everything's set up. And I'm the only person in the seats. Seats. Okay. And there's a stage up there. And up on the stage, there's a director. And the director is me. And then I see also that back in the in the booth up there, there is the producer. And the producer is me. And then right next to me is the writer, the script writer. And the script writer is me too. And then I'm up on the stage as the actor. And I'm like, wow, this is really interesting. So across the stage goes my, my life in a play form. And I realize that I'm the actor. And the other people who have been in my life are also actors. That they had chosen to take this role in my life so that they could help me be who I needed to be. And I also realized that they had chosen this out of love for me and that we had all chosen this together before I came into form. And then I could look at them, including my mother, as having loved me so much that she could put me in, she could put herself in the position to do all those horrible things to me because she loved me that much that she wanted me to be able to have the foundation to, to help to guide the people that I do today. And then all of a sudden I, do, I woke up one day and I'm just jittery and like I've had way too much coffee and it, it just, I, I have no idea what's going on, but I'm just, everything is just, uh, and I just, ah, and I'm just not able to even function because it's so, I, I just, I, out of sorts. And, and I, I just, I have no idea what's going on. And I tried everything, every method I have, I tried and nothing, nothing touched it. And I'm like, I have no idea what's going on, but something has to change here. And on the third morning, I woke up in a bliss and freedom and love like I had never felt. It was even more so than in my own experiences. And this one included the extra freedom on it. And I'm like, wow, I have no idea what this is either, but it's kind of cool. And later that day, my brother called me and he said, I, I have to tell you, our mother died last night or this morning. And I said, I told him what had happened. And I realized I had shared her experience of leaving form. And that she was now in the bliss and freedom and love that is beyond. And I'm like, wow. Now, I've never even heard the term shared death experience at this point. By this point, I know what a near-death experience is. I'd never heard of a shared death experience. And I'm like, wow, this is cool. And a little while later, I learned that that was the term for it. I went, I think that's what I did. And so with that, 
now she's on the other side. Now we have a better relationship than we ever had when she was in form. I, I, I realize that, she, that there's no need for this forgiving because it was all done in love. And it is still all done in love. And so that's that's the, the, the all of the near death and shared death experiences that I have had. Well, not all of them, but that's the, the crux of it. I don't know that my purpose is actually was actually fulfilled at that point in time. But it turns out that I'm I'm a fairly stubborn person. And the the guides that I have uh, who have now tell, told me their name is the Wisdom Keepers. Uh, uh, wisdom Keepers of Lost Civilizations, but we'll shorten it to Wisdom Keepers. Um, that in order for it to get through to me the way that it needed to, because I resist so much, that they needed to give it to me in pieces instead of one big lump so that I could actually get it, so that I could evolve from where I was with the first one to where I was by the last one. And so it had to be given to me in pieces. And they they wanted to be able to come through me to give messages, to guide people. Uh, but they needed me to be ready for it. And that process took quite some time. So that's what the how they wanted me to have the experience, how we had agreed to have the experience before I came into form. Um, and as for my purpose, my purpose became even more clear later on. In fact, last summer, when they took me, well, well my purpose is also to guide people through their traumas, but they took me through a, a a, a death-like experience that they wanted to get out to the world. We all are entrained and ingrained and taught that in order to get from inform to not inform, you have to go through pain. You have to go through suffering. It has to be very awful. And it's, it, it, you know, either that or it has to be something really super sudden, like a car accident or something this is not necessarily true. We can leave form without pain, without suffering. Much like many of the gurus of the Eastern areas have done, but without 30 years of meditating, that it is possible for all of us to be able to leave form when we choose and in a way that is in bliss, in joy, and has no, it, it, there's no long suffering before it, no months or years of coming to it. It doesn't have to be that way. And that's what they want to bring through right now to the world is that there is a different choice. We don't have to be stuck in all of the trainings of the past. We can move forward into something that is even better. I've actually been doing this for a very long time, not even realizing I was doing it. In fact, it started after the birth of my first son. Because of this calming presence, people would come to me and talk to me. They'd ask me their deepest questions. I didn't maybe didn't even know these people, but they would feel that they could talk to me. And so they would come up and they would ask me things and, and want my opinion about how to handle situations and such. I didn't have a clue what this was called at the time. I just knew that I could do it. And I also knew that people would be would be talking to me and something would come out of me. I wouldn't know what it was. It wouldn't strike me as being anything like, you know, earth shattering or anything, but it would be perfectly what they needed to hear at the moment. And they would say, oh, that's just what I needed to hear. 
or you know something along those lines and i'm like oh okay that's cool and it took me a long time to realize that what i was actually doing was being a guide for these people and so i it evolved into guiding them through traumas most of what i do is helping people through quote trauma but i have to explain trauma because trauma has a lot of misgivings with it um everyone has trauma every one of us has trauma every one of us has things that have happened in our lives events or whatever that for whatever reason we've held on to and made our made safety around us that we cannot get past because it's there to protect us and it takes some guidance to be able to get past that safety wall net whatever it happens to be to be able to move on through the trauma and so i i don't use the word trauma as you know something like you know, abuse, although it could be. Uh, in my case, it was. But it's anything that that someone has kept inside of them that they they can't seem to get past. And that's that could be really simple. It could be uh, one of them that has come up for me recently. Absolutely. It has for everybody who's done it, and it will for everybody who wants to. Um, it's, it's a matter of realizing that it's a possibility. It's really, it's not that, that difficult, but it's, it, it takes work. It takes concentration. It takes focus. Uh, it, it takes practice, but it's, it's not, once you get through it, you're like, well, that wasn't so bad. And I do understand, I've been there, that it's really daunting at first when you think, I have to do what? Okay, step by step, just take it one step at a time. Nobody said you had to climb the mountain in one leap. You know, but it will happen. You climb it one step, another step, another step another step and eventually you get to at least a place where you can look back and say oh look how far i've come and more more steps more steps and you will get to the other side and believe me because i have been there and i am there when you get to the other side it's wonderful the amount of tools techniques whatever is endless Keep looking. If you can't find one that works for you, keep looking. Watch podcasts, read books, whatever, until you find what works for you. And it might be like me that you have multiple things that work for you depending on the situation. It doesn't have to be just one, but you can, you can look at whatever's out there and you can find it. That's the joy of tech at this moment. It, it's everything is available. There is no death. Understand that there is no death. And there's only two emotions. There's fear. And there's what a lot of people call love, which I'm now calling bliss. There's only the two. Everything else comes into those two. So if you're if you're not in love or bliss there's fear there and if you're trying to heal something look at what the fear is facing the fear as scary as that seems is a lot less frightening than living in the fear once you face it you will see that the demon that you thought you had in front of you is really no more than just a little schmoo so if you want to get a hold of me my website is handle the shift, S H I F T dot com. You can also find me on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel called Human Conversations, 
and you have to look it up. Human conversations, lay more to find it. Uh, but you can watch my videos there. Uh, you can also see me on Facebook or LinkedIn or most of um, I'm pretty well available. If you look up my name, lay more, you'll find me. But the main way that you can get a hold of me is my website, handle the shift dot com.